morning and welcome. It is good to see all of you. Uh, I believe that half of you are sitting in the choir. There's 21 there. And how many do you guys have? 10. We'll just say you have 30. Okay, that's okay. So welcome Bell Choir, welcome Choir, welcome all of you. Uh, Sally, I was asked by the choir to direct today because their director was missing. I said no. No, no. That's, a, that's the problem. So they want you to come back. So welcome this morning. Now, a um, couple of things to let you know. Number one, uh, it is Palm Sunday, the beginning of Holy Week. Please do take the time to be aware of the services that are mentioned in the bulletin. Holy Thursday at 6 p.m. Good Friday, the church is open for prayer from 12 until 3. Those are the hours that we believe that Christ was on the cross, and so we want to avail the chance to pray and just to, to say thanks to God for that tremendous love. 6 p.m. Good Friday. On Easter Sunday, sunrise service at 6.30. Now, if it's 33 degrees again, we're going to be inside. I am a wimp, and I don't want to be out in the cold, and I don't think you do either. So I'm just saying, look for where the cars are gathered, but if it's anything like today, it will be right here. And then the three regular services that we have. Um, I'm doing something different with vacation this year after Easter, because next Sunday is Holy Communion, and I need to be here to serve the sacrament. So I'm taking a few days off immediately after Easter, and then I'm taking the week after that, the, this is the 11th, 12th, 13th, and 14th off. So I will be gone during those times. But if you need me, please do call me. <coughs> so I'll or text. Bless you. I also want to say to you that yesterday, when the weather was really, really bad, and we had to move our Easter egg hunt and children's celebration inside, we had about 17 children. And to all who were involved in that, thank you for a wonderful, wonderful day. And Scott, your young men did an outstanding job. They were directing the games. Um, sadly, I didn't win the games, uh, but they did an excellent job. And also, just be aware that we went to Carabas for Stephen Ministry yesterday. Jack and Mary Stover was here earlier. And... I believe the total that I was told was 1,040 in uh, mon money that was raised. Everybody had a good time. Uh, Dick got filled up with food, so it's always a good thing. And, and so we thank you for your efforts in arranging that and Larry, uh, Larry's efforts also. This week, it, this month, excuse me, this month our mission has been veterans. And, and, and one of the neat things about this church, and I just want to make sure everybody hears it, because I'm very proud of this church and what this says. This church helps veterans in every county on the eastern shore of Maryland. And I think that's tremendous, and I think you deserve a pat on the back. Uh, the American Legion in Ocean City is a very generous giver. Um, and we thank them and we acknowledge their contributions. But please be proud of some of the things that your church does, one of which is reaching out to, to veterans. I want to ask, are there any birthdays today or this week? Anybody celebrating a birthday? Or miss any? I don't see any. Anyone having an anniversary today or this week? Wow, what number? 65. 65. So you have been married longer than I've been alive. <laughs> so congratulations to you. And you would do it all over again, wouldn't you? Yes. Yes, you would. I knew. So Mr. Vick, can we sing happy anniversary to these dear folks? <laughs> Special request. 
this week, please do pray for me. Um, first of all, we have this morning, and then 2 o'clock I have a homecoming service at Shao. And then this afternoon after that, 6 o'clock Bible study. And then we really start getting busy. <laughs> and uh, we have Thursday, Friday, Sunday. It's a very full week for my energy and my uh, ability to share with you the love of God. Your prayers are greatly, greatly appreciated. We turn to Dick for our prayer <coughs> this
Um, good morning. Good morning. I, if I could take just a second, I was sitting in the chair looking at the bulletin, and I had to reminisce a little bit about when I was a young girl, a young child, my parents, when they, we would come back from church with the palm in our hand. They would always put the palm above um, a picture, above a, a frame that said, God bless our home, with the cross above it. And so when my mom died, I took that picture, and so it's sitting in my foyer. So that's a, a, something that we do. When the best palm comes home today, that's where it will be. It will be behind that picture, and the cross will be above it. So I just wanted to take just a second about that. Um, again, good morning. Today is Palm Sunday. And on this day, Jesus entered the city of Jerusalem to the shouts of Hosanna by the crowds. Those watching tore off palm branches and laid them on his path. This morning, we remember the beginning of the passion of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Community Church at Ocean Pines, and thank you for worshiping with us. Let us pray the opening prayer today. Lord Jesus Christ, on this Palm Sunday, as we remember your triumph and entry into Jerusalem, let us also remember the path that lay before you, that our hearts is in the ability and faithfulness that you displayed. Amen. Please join me in the call to worship. Please stand if able and participate in a responsive manner. Humble and riding on a donkey, proclaimed by crowds and sung to by children, having known the peace of the countryside to the quarters of power, we salute you, Christ our Lord. We are giving the beast of burden, you are giving the beast of burden, a new face. A new song to sing. With them, with heart and voice, we shout, Hosanna. This is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Please continue to stand and sing hymn 278, Hosanna. Loud Hosanna. Accompanied 
by the crowd. <clears throat> and that crowd ripped off branches from local palm trees and laid them in your path and laid their coats and cloaks that you might ride into the city in the splendor and awe and majesty you deserve. <clears throat> and their shouts were, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, blessed who is the one who comes in the name of David. We too shout this morning, Hosanna. Blessed is the Christ who comes. Help us on this Palm Sunday to shout loud and clearly our praise to you. For a few days later this week, those shouts and cries of the crowd and of us will change. And they will not be nearly as pleasant, nor as filled with praise, but rather they will be crucify him. Crucify him. Give us Barabbas. We are so thankful, wonderful Christ, for this week. For the exalted joy of the parade of Palm <clears throat> Sunday, to the splendor cross and the death of our Christ there. We would love to jump right to Easter, but we can't. There are many days and a journey ahead. Help us to journey with Christ. Help us not to waste this time or to lose it or to be engaged in frivolous pursuits which draw our attention, but help us to focus in on the face of that one who rides today on donkey is the shouts of Hosanna into the city of Jerusalem. Gracious and loving God, we pray for our world where there are places of violence bring peace, where there is need for food bring what is absolutely needed where places of education and opportunities to provide economic care for families, may we in the church and others be generous and kind in our giving to help. For all of us, bring hope and joy and peace and salvation. We pray for those who grieve, for those who are ill. We pray today particularly for, for persons in need of faith, who feel lost and vulnerable in this difficult and challenging world. We pray for one another and for ourselves, not in a selfish way, but in a way that opens our hearts and lives to Christ. May we on this Palm Sunday get ready for the joy of Easter. And I invite you to join me in a time of silent prayer.
got to believe she's hiring. She's already gotten like three gold stars. So if it's okay with you, and Mary's not embarrassed by all this, we'll go ahead. Whatever she wants. So there's a part to get to sing on. You'll notice it's right in here in the midst of our anthem. It's a familiar tune, and I'm only going to sort of just sing the first two lines so you'll get it in here. It's the one that goes. People and rooms of every town. Melody is lovely, sweet as song. So I hope you recognize the tune a little. So we're going to sing it also, but when I turn around, then you're to join us in on that.
go into the village ahead of you, and immediately, as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this. The Lord needs it, and will send it back there immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying a colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and he went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. There will be anointing during the singing of our next song. If anyone has any special requests for prayers, Stephen Minister can meet with them in the chapel after the service. Please stand if able and sing hymn 280, All Glory, All Glory.
So I have to tell you, as I stand before you, I'm a little bit afraid. I'm afraid because when I heard Dick's prelude, it was outstanding. And then when I heard the bells, they were awesome. And choir, you did an absolutely tremendous job. I'm just hoping the sermon measures up. You can take the day off if you like. Thank you, Jack. <laughs> Jack, could you go to the principal's office? There's <laughs> crisis. I hope when I'm your age, I have as good a sense of humor as you do, my friend. So, um, Tom, I want to talk right to you for just a minute. I was reflecting back this morning to my seminary experience. I graduated from seminary in 1984, and that's a long time ago. It's actually in the previous century. I don't know when you graduated from Wesley, friend, but when we took homiletics, one of the things we did was we listened to sermons from great preachers, and we read sermons from other ministers. One that had a great impact on me was a sermon by Peter Marshall, who was a Presbyterian clergyman who became chaplain of the Senate. You probably have read the book, A Man Called Peter by Catherine Marshall, or, or seen the movie. If you haven't, I encourage you to do so. But even more than that, you can Google the sermon on the net and, and listen to it. And I listen to it every Good Friday. And what Peter Marshall does in this sermon is invite you to use your imagination. And to use that imagination to think about being there as if you were a person on Palm Sunday, his sermon on Good Friday, when these events are happening. So I invent you, I, I ask you, I invite you to use your imagination today. Think as if you are there on that first Palm Sunday, watching all of these things happen. So let us pray. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. So for whatever reason, you find yourself traveling on the road that leads through Bethany and Bethpage toward the city of Jerusalem. Maybe you're going to see family. Maybe you have a business responsibility. Maybe you're just going in because it's a time of excitement as Passover rapidly approaches. The reasons are different. And it's your choice which reason you choose, or maybe another reason that you find yourself standing on that road on your way to the city of Jerusalem. And you look down to your left and you see a crowd of people. And you can hear that they're saying something, but the distance is so great, you can't particularly discern what it is they're saying. And you have those two feelings. You're both curious and afraid. Curious because you want to know what's going on. You want to understand better who these people are and why they've gathered and what they're up to, right? Afraid because maybe they have evil intent. Maybe there's a rabble or a mob coming to do harm to other people. You're just not sure. So you pause. And you kind of wait for the crowd to get closer. And as they get closer, you hear the sounds of the words they're saying, Hosanna, Hosanna to God in the highest Great is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the one who comes, who is descended from David. And you keep playing. And as that crowd draws closer, you see a familiar figure that you recognize. 
You've read about him in the Jerusalem newspaper. Maybe you Googled him in ancient Jerusalem's equivalent of whatever that was. You've seen him on TV. You recognize him as Jesus, the one who says he is the Messiah. The one who says he's sent from God, the one who healed and fed and touched and loved so many. This miracle worker, and you wonder what's happening. But you are mesmerized by watching him. He's not a striking figure. You remember the passages from Isaiah that tell us that it wasn't because of the physical appearance of Jesus that so many came to love him, but for whatever reason it is, you cannot take your eyes off him. He is in the very center of your gaze. And you feel compelled to shout Hosanna as well. crowd draws closer and closer and closer. And now you can see the distinct faces of people in the crowd. And you're looking for a familiar face. And you see, wait a second, that's Zacchaeus, isn't it? And you remember what happened to Zacchaeus. He was a tax collector who called who charged exorbitant rates of interest to people and who took money in that fashion and handed his own wallet. And since April 15th is drawing closer, nobody likes tax collectors. But Zacchaeus was short and climbed a sycamore tree just to see Jesus. And Jesus stopped and went to Zacchaeus' home for dinner and Zacchaeus says, Lord, salvation is coming to this house. And he returned all that he had stolen, plus more. So you kind of move over to Zacchaeus and you elbow him in the side and ask him, are you going to climb a tree today? And he says, no, my days of Jesus is perfectly, perfectly clear. I'm kind of embarrassed by what you said to Zacchaeus. Maybe the setting wasn't right to give him a hard time or to remind him of that day. But you keep looking around, and the next person you see is a woman. You remember her as the Samaritan woman, the woman at the well. You wonder why she's here, a Samaritan. After all, this is a Jewish celebration. Samaritans are wanted, are welcome. But there she was, and you know about her past having had many husbands and now living with someone who wasn't her husband and how she encountered Jesus in the heat of the middle of the day around that wall. And how she tried to change the subject and she's told this story to everyone because that's what the text tells us. But Jesus wasn't going to be taken in a different direction. He wanted to talk to her about living water, the kind you drink never get thirsty again. You see her laughing and crying and shouting and proclaiming Hosanna in the midst of that crowd where everybody is welcome. No one, not even the Samaritan, is excluded. And then you see his disciples. You see James and John and you know their nickname because they are notorious. They're known as the Sons of Thunder. And they grew up on the Eastern Shore of Maryland. <laughs> Just go to the story. They have a pickup truck whose wheels are taller than me. And a gun rack in the back and lots of camouflage. And they are there too. Praising and celebrating Jesus on this Palm Sunday. Fishermen, hardworking, blue collar men. Welcome in this crowd. You look around some more and you see a little boy. You recognize him because he was the one 
whose mom packed a lunch of just a few loaves of bread and a few fish. And Jesus touched it and used it to feed the multitude and to have 12 baskets left over. He's there. And so are the nameless persons. <clears throat> Scripture doesn't tell us who they are, but who are important to Jesus. And because they're important to Jesus, they are important to us. Persons who could, just a few weeks ago, not hear. Now they hear. Who just a few weeks ago were struggling to walk because they were lame trying to be healed by Jesus, and he touched them, and now they walk and run and jump and skip with the best of them. Persons who couldn't see, who couldn't hear, who couldn't speak, who couldn't walk, all healed by Jesus, because that's what the Messiah said he came to do. And all of them are on the road. And so you join in the crowd and you follow into the city. You are a part of that throng who is singing those wonderful and beautiful hymns and words that we've heard already. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. When I was little, we had we had to watch, watched. The Macy's Day Parade. And remember how they had the big balloons? I never quite figured out how they got the big balloons down the street without hitting all the buildings or popping a balloon. Palm Sunday is like a parade. There's joy, there's laughter, there's happiness, there's good times. People are celebrating. We are thrilled with all that goes on. Wouldn't it be nice if every day was like that? But it isn't. Not even for Christ. Not for us. Because during this week, there will be another crowd. And that crowd will be gathered not on the road leading into Jerusalem, but instead it will be gathered in a place where Pilate, the Roman governor, has to choose between two persons. He's given the choice between Barabbas. And Barabbas is identified as an insurrectionist, a rebel, a terrorist. Barabbas would be like those persons who caused such horrible death in Moscow over this past week. At the last, I know, was 140 or more dead persons. That's Barabbas. And Jesus. This Jesus who said to us, don't just love your friends, don't just do good to those who do good to you, but love your enemies. And do good to those who do harm to you. Pilate wants desperately to release Jesus. Because Pilate's wife in a dream this past week has been warned that he should not do any harm to this man, that he should not hurt him in any way. And so he pulls the crowd, and the crowd try, cries out, Give us Barabbas. Give us Barabbas. We're faced with a choice, people. The choice between violence and harm and hate and all the things that divide our world even to this day because so many centuries ago we chose the way of Barabbas. Or Jesus. God's Messiah. God's Son. Pilate has no control over the crowd. He can't silence them. And so he asked them, then what should I do with Jesus who is called the Christ? And we in that crowd who had been just a few days ago hollering out, shouting, Hosanna, shout out a very different message. Crucify him. Crucify him. 
crucified. Peter Marshall, in his sermon, points to the fact that we were all there at the cross. That as Jesus hung there on that tree, we, all persons, were on his mind and in his heart. That he wasn't forced or compelled to go to that cross. He went because he loves every one of us. And he loves the people that we choose not to love. This week is a hard week for Christ. It's a hard week for us. And dare we not on this holy week fail to journey with Jesus through Thursday evening where he will have his last supper with the disciples and where he, modeling what the kingdom of God is like, will take off his outer garment and take a basin of water and a towel and wash the feet of all those gathered in the upper room, modeling the service that is a reality, reality excuse me, for the kingdom of God. And on Thursday night, we'll hear him say, a new commandment, a new mandate, hence Monday Thursday, I give to you, that you love one another even as I have loved you. And then he will be arrested and scourged and mocked and made fun of. And then he will be crucified. And he will die there on Good Friday. You see, we're a crowd, part of that crowd on both occasions, aren't we? On occasion, people are kind of fickle. It's very easy to go along with the peer pressure in the crowd and shout, Yes, we love Jesus. Hosanna. But when it's a different crowd, it's all too easy to say, Crucify him. Crucify him. Crucify him. It's a matter of convenience and so much more. I don't know about you, but I'd like to jump right from Palm Sunday to Easter. Celebrations are great. Parties are wonderful. But we can't. Because if we jump from one to the other, we lose the power of Easter that comes from Good Friday. Next Sunday morning, I'll stand in this very spot. And I will say to you that Christ the Lord is risen. And you will respond with, he is risen indeed. We're almost there. Lent is done. All of, those, all of those of you who gave up chocolate can eat all the chocolate you want. But we're not quite yet to Easter. We're not quite yet to the resurrection, to the empty tomb, to the end of one story and the beginning of another. Don't miss this week journey with Jesus into the city, but through the Last Supper, through the cross and death, and ultimately to the wonder of resurrection. I want to tell you that I had the joy of representing this congregation this past Friday evening at Temple Bot Young. And it was pure. And of course, that's the story of Esther saving the people. And I want to, just because this will be on YouTube and we'll be publishing this, I just want to publicly say how wonderful that congregation, that place, House of Worship is, and how warmly I was cared for and welcomed um, they made sure that I had more to eat than I ever needed. And I have to say, I will never read the story of Esther in the same way. Because what they do when they, when, you, when they say the name of the evil villain of the story, Haman, is they make noise and they jeer and laugh at him. So I'm going to ask you to do that the next time I preach on, East, on Esther. So be prepared. But they were wonderful people, and I just want to publicly thank them for their hospitality at this time. I also want to thank you for your generosity in giving. And at this time, let us receive our morning tithes and offerings. Mighty God, on that first Palm Sunday, 
Jesus rode into the city where he would soon encounter celebration, followed by misunderstanding and sacrifice. Just as his disciples and crowds blessed his entry, spreading garments and branches, so we've come to lay at your feet these offerings, symbols of all we have and are. May this offering be our Hosanna, as we bless your beloved Son, the one who comes in the name of the Lord.
speaking at Shell. I do not expect you to come, but you are welcome to come because I'm using the same sermon. And I did write another sermon, but I just feel like I, it's Palm Sunday and I want to use this one. Um, I have the joy of celebrating the ministry of their pastor, uh, Joe Kane, who some of you know, who is retiring this year. Joe is a lay person who has been serving that church, I think, for a decade or more. And he is retiring, and he is in his 80s. And I was his mentor. I just laugh at that. And of welcoming in the new pastor who is 22 years of age. And I'm somewhere in the middle, but I'm not going to say where. And his name is Joseph Hayden, and I'm also Joseph's mentor. So it's going to be a great day, and I look forward to being there. If you see me dashing out, please don't be offended. I just need lunch and to, to get ready to go over to join those dear people at Shell. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your faithfulness and all that you do. Uh, Sally, as our, I guess, technical music director and all the things that you do, thank you for such wonderful music this morning to the choir and to the bell choir. Dick, thank you as well. Happy Palm Sunday, and may you journey with us all through this week of Easter. Let us pray. Is your, <coughs> your mercy enable us to share in his obedience to your will, and in the glorious victory of Jesus' resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us sing together. 